<laughs> All right, Martha, let's look at these long-handled tools okay. over here. Okay. This is one of my favorite of all time tools. I know I have a lot of them, but uh, I only have two of these. <laughs> and um, the amazing thing with this is it's a fiberglass handle and you can see it's been used quite a bit. I've had it, I got it in Wichita, Wichita Hardware in Portland. Hmm. So it's been a while. And um, the beauty of this thing is that you, it has some weight to it and you can really get down and dig. If you're digging a hole and this, this one fails you, you know, and you can't really get any further and you can just go further with this because it's a smaller surface. You see how big mm -hmm. this surface is? Well, with the sturdy weight and the smaller edge, you can really dig in and get beyond where you thought, you know, you were in hard pan and it's like, oh, you know, this is Lopez. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. There's been many, even rocks. You can get rocks out with this. Yeah. But you have to be careful that you don't oil can. You can see, bend it and you can see there's a little stress mark there. And um, by far planting one gallon to five gallon, this is really great to do. Bigger things, I use that. I first start with that and then if I run into trouble, which is every time here on Lopez, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, this is a great, I think it's a spade. So anyway, and then of course your regular shovel. This one, you know, this has these ridges here and don't buy this kind of shovel because it's these edges here, it makes it actually harder to dig into the ground. It doesn't, it, it, there's more strength, but it's, it's a harder one to dig and I don't re recommend it. Okay. And so this is your, just your average, average hoe. And you can see that this one is quite used. I didn't do all that. And what I really like about it is my truck is I can reach in. I have a canopy and I can reach in and get <laughs> stuff out. That's really handy. That, that's not... That's Tool wise? <laughs> okay, it's not garden wise? Okay. So, but if we can also do it on the ground here and you can, you can weed, you can cultivate, and then you're not bending over. Yeah. So Suzanne will be able to tell us what, yeah. what the proper way to hoe is. Mm -hmm. I'd, be, I'd be interested in that. Yeah, she knows a lot. And then, so other things, there's this thing called a wing weeder. These two are These both two, wing weeders. Yep, yeah, and this, uh, out of all the hand, long handled ones uh, these are my favorites because you can get underneath the soil underneath the gravel you see these weeds right here Martha mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you can either Keep blow going. it with the blower or rake you can also bring it on its edge and get in cracks next to rocks Hmm. It's, it's really handy cool. and this has a low surface so it's easier to move this one it's a is small head it's smaller and this one's a little bit bigger mm -hmm. to, harder to to do okay so you might w wonder why I have this old busted rake well the reason is is because it's an old rake and back when they made steel with steel and it was really tough but for a rake a, a metal tine rake is as far as I'm concerned indispensable mm -hmm. do you have one in your we have shed? three okay the plastic ones don't work very well yeah and um, and yes but the older ones are actually steel and they have a better um, they have better flexibility flexibility and then it bounces back from yeah yeah. from abuse resilient thank you and uh so this you may wonder what the hell is this so well, rake for little bee spaces yeah you got it yeah. so you can really get in nooks and crannies with yeah. this this is quite handy yeah and um like from from the base of your um barberry over there you can get all without getting Underneath. stuck oh, that's mm -hmm. a good idea great idea Scrapers. It's a scraper like these. Yep. And the interesting thing about it has a pivoting head. You see that? Yeah. It moves so it, it, it actually 
it isn't a rigid tool and um, so you can use it either way you can use it on this side here and you can see that we can go back and forth and you see how it's getting the weeds out of there and then I off, often use it this way at times <laughs> all okay. right oh last What's this so you know you go to hardware store box store or whatever and you get those long pole pruners that extend out and then they get all tangled up and, and in a mess well finally i was watching this guy you know this professional tree care guy which you know uh for this company and he had these and i resisted you know how you resist getting something you know is good for you so this is what i resisted and what i love about this is you can see these little holes here snaps in snaps right in and then you just put it in there like that pull that up snap and you're together and then you can add another pole to it and you can get pretty high that's why i have this little extended rope on it and so can you, can you can you hold uh, that top part and i'll put another this is the bottom one that's just the flat There you go. So now you have this pruner that you can go pretty high. And um, so a lot of times you have, most pruners have the saw attached onto it. And um, so what you're not doing with this, you're not scraping branches with the saw blade, which makes wounds into the trees. And so you've just got its own head on it. And so, so when you need a saw, you can just, just pull this out, put the saw on. Why wouldn't you put it? Oh, well then what? That was to the... Yeah, that's for cutting limbs with the I, I want you all to see this beautiful sheet. Yeah, don't you love that? <laughs> that <homemade>. Erica's made. <laughs> Yeah. I love it. And uh, again, let's see. Where's the hole? That easy. So you, then you got a larger limb, and uh, you're not getting the rope tangled into your trees and, and getting hung up. So it's a bit of money, but it's certainly, if you're doing pruning on the ground, with a pole that's not powered this is it there's nothing like it cool and you can get it at whisper on bellingham in case you wondered what is that whisper whisper it's a professional arborist oh really company yeah uh, huh they sell all over the world oh. it just happens to be around here oh good for us yeah we're over here at uh, your trailer with this heap of debris, and I'm sure it must have been a struggle to get it up there. So I want to show you a little, little. Uh, what do they call those things? These cyber people, they call them hacks. This is a gardening hack. So let's say um, you have a pile of your debris and you want to put it in to, um, on top of your trailer. So uh, this, you can pull any debris um, and hold it in the air. So you've made a, a pile of trimmings. You can walk through your garden and through that salal over there and hold this, you know, you can have it behind you like that. Just go on a trip. And just go on a trip yeah. and get it to your trailer. Why Quick. wouldn't you put your trailer near where you're going to be or a the, wheelbarrow? The debris is over in the middle over there, and um, your trailer's right here. Well, wouldn't you put it in a wheelbarrow or something instead of? Well, if you if you didn't have a path. Oh. Mm. 
So oh. it's a way of moving debris and not having to touch it or bend over. And it, you can get a lot of, and this is already stacked here and everything. So yeah, all intents and purposes, if you suspend disbelief here for a second, if it's on the ground, especially fir boughs, you can just go along the ground and just pick up fir boughs like this. You don't even have to bend over and pick them up. That's really, that's really handy. And then you just throw them on your trailer. Right? Yeah, you know, we just thought y'all should know, I raked up all this the last two days. That's amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> anyway, but so I had these piles all over, and we'd bend down and pick them up. It, we should have used that yeah. to pick up the piles yeah. into a wheelbarrow. That's right. Yeah, I'm going to get one of those. Yeah, this is one of the underutilized tools that I can think of. I thought these were just for barns. Uh-uh. All right, what do you do with that one? All right, so you can see this one is a is a um, a fork, but it's bent. And the purpose of this is so you take this to David Bills, and if you don't have a tarp underneath it or you're just really heavy, I think you're going to have a problem here with this. The weight of this here, you're not going to be able to pull the tarp off. So that's why this comes in handy. Mm -hmm. So I would be on the back end. And so what this does is that you can you go right into your debris and then you pull. Oh, don't pull it off. And then you just use your whole body and you bend like this. And then you can get it out of there in a second. Well, this has been really informative. Well, thank you, Martha. Uh -huh. Thank you for having me over and showing you my tools that I've come to use over the years. I won't tell you how many, but... <laughs> Thank you, thank you for having me. I oh, appreciate thank that. You. And I hope you all learned something and you'll try tools. And I think that we should have an exchange. You should try each other's tools and you bring them to one of the meetings and you talk about it. And I think that'd be a really good thing because there's more of them out there that I haven't even used. And so I think if you did that, I think you all learned something. I think we're going to do something like that in the meeting. We're uh, going to have people right. talk about their favorite tools. Cool. Yeah, I think because I'm, I'm not the word, so. I think you are. Well, thank you, Martha. Thank you, Eric.